I accidentally broke my boyfriend's ribs and punctured a lung after he recreated the worst day of my life as a prank. I think it's destroyed my life. What do I do now? This just happened two nights ago, so I'm still reeling emotionally. I know this is long, but there's some important background context, and I am in desperate need of answers. I've been a long-time listener to the THT podcast, so I'm really hoping that the community can just give me options on what I can do. Almost six years ago, I, 29M, lost my partner suddenly in an accident while he was overseas on a work trip. When I lost him, I cannot describe the pain and the anguish and the emotional hellscape that I found myself in. We planned a life together and in a fraction of a second it was all gone. In the aftermath, I completely collapsed as a human. I left my career in healthcare, I couldn't leave my apartment for three months, I lost 60 pounds and was already really skinny, and I just shut down. In short, I was a mess in every single way. With the support of some very persistent friends, community resources, and an amazing therapist, I started to process and move forward. Through intense therapy and temporary psychiatric help, I've been able to heal over the years, though grieving isn't a linear process. Fast forward to around two and a half years ago when I met my current boyfriend, 29M. It's hard to describe getting into a relationship after losing a soulmate, but please know that he wasn't a rebound and isn't second place or anything like that. I do love him with my whole heart even though I'll always still love my late partner. My boyfriend has a foundation of similar values, ideal relationship dynamics, communication styles to my late partner, but has a completely different personality, look, lifestyle, appearance, etc. I love him for all of his differences as much as his similarities. My therapist and I knew that it was important for me to not date someone who I would expect to be a stand-in for my late partner. Her and I have checked in constantly throughout the major stages of my relationship to ensure that I'm sticking to that. At this point, I've honestly pictured what the rest of my life would look like with him in it, and he said the same. He was also the most understanding boyfriend when I first told him about my late partner's passing and my grieving journey. If there was a textbook way to handle the situation, he could have written the whole thing. I truly could not have asked for a better boyfriend. That was until yesterday. My boyfriend likes to play pranks on me, and he's even filmed some of them to upload online. It's not a constant thing or frequent enough for me to always be on my toes, and I've always said that I'm prone to weird things happening to me, so I'm never the wiser when I'm being pranked. For sake of anonymity, I won't go into details on previous pranks he's pulled, because a few have gotten quite a large number of views, but they're mostly harmless, annoying, etc. As much as I hate being pranked in the moment, he's never gone too far, he's always checked in on me, he gets my permission to post them, and all that. I guess I should say that he had never gone too far until yesterday. He texted me in the morning to confirm dinner plans we had that evening, and I replied asking if he needed me to pick up anything on my way home from work. At least twice a month, he cooks us an elaborate dinner. I'm talking coordinated wine pairings, five courses, tasting menus, things like that. Like I said, he's a perfect boyfriend. I plan to FaceTime him at lunch like I always do, so no big deal. Well he didn't answer me at lunch. No big deal, he's probably busy. I sent him a couple more texts after lunch, just random stuff, but he never responded, and when I finished work my phone showed he never even read them. I got a little anxious admittedly but pushed it aside. I don't need to hear from him constantly, but a sudden break in our routine felt weird because he always tells me in advance when something is going on or if he's busy. Always. He also always forgets something for the dinners he makes us and asks me to grab something on the way home. Always. Not today though. Anyway, I drive to his apartment from work and let myself in with the key he gave me. I expected to hear music, smell some dinner, or something, but it was completely silent. I put my stuff down on the hall bench and walked toward the kitchen. I saw grocery bags at the kitchen's entrance, which I thought was weird. As soon as I entered the kitchen, I saw a broken wine glass at the far end of his kitchen island with a few drops of what I thought was red wine until I saw his feet sticking out. I sprinted around the island and he was laying on his side, facing away from me. There was blood everywhere. On the edge of the island, splatters on the wall, and a large pool of blood around his head. I haven't made the sounds that came out of me since I got the call that my late partner passed. My heart was racing so bad that my chest and head hurt. Though I felt like I was in full-blown panic mode, I physically went into autopilot. I work in healthcare again, so I'm glad that my instincts kicked in. He was on his side, so I flipped him flat on his back. From what I gathered, trying to take a medical visual inventory of his injuries, it looked like he was just bleeding from his head. He didn't respond to my voice or a quick sternal rub. He wasn't moving at all, and when I put my ear down to his mouth, I wasn't hearing or feeling breathing. He had blood all over his face, so I couldn't tell if his lips were blue or anything like that. 
I do remember checking for a pulse and I truthfully didn't feel one though in hindsight I can't be sure if I was mentally stable enough to discern one either way, so I tilted his head back and put my hands over his chest to start CPR while screaming at my phone for Siri to call 911. I only got two hard and fast compressions in when he miraculously came back from the dead, screaming bloody murder. After that, I'm not going to lie, I blacked out a bit. I remember getting lightheaded, my boyfriend shaking me, him apologizing, I remember him calling off 911, and I remember leaving his apartment covered in what I had obviously figured out was fake blood. I did get a call from 911 slash police to confirm basically that my BF had played a prank and no one needed help. Otherwise, I felt completely catatonic in a way? I dissociated. Needless to say, since last night I've been a complete mess, I'm angry, and I'm devastated. The entire thing keeps playing in my head, and while the logical part of my brain knows that he pranked me and that he's alive, my body hasn't figured it out. Worse, this completely brought up everything surrounding my late partner, and I feel like I have to start my grieving process for him all over again. The anger I feel isn't a revenge type of anger, but an exhausted type of anger. The rage is so strong and intense that it's taken every once of energy away to act on any of it. I guess that's a good thing. My boyfriend has tried calling me over 40 times. He sent me too many texts to count. He even came over to try to talk to me that same night, but luckily even though he has a key, I have a deadbolt chain so he wasn't able to get in. Basically he shouted an apology through the crack and begged me to talk to him. My neighbor shoot him off after a while. My friends have also messaged me to ask if I was safe, saying he contacted them and told them everything. I've only texted one of my friends back. I have a therapy appointment tomorrow, but I just need to crowdsource thoughts right now. My boyfriend's sister called me this morning in tears apologizing on her brother's behalf and told me how sorry he is. She said that if he would have told her about the prank beforehand, she would have chewed him out for even thinking of the idea. Their parents were horrified as well and have said that they are here to support me in whatever way I need. His sister told me that he had come over to her house after I didn't let him into my place and he was having a major anxiety attack with chest pain, racing heartbeat, and trouble breathing. It was so bad that she took him to the ER where they learned that I had fractured a couple of his ribs while attempting to give him what I thought was life-saving CPR and in the process had also punctured a lung. There are so many emotions going through my head right now. I am so angry at the world for, yet again, ripping away a man I love from me, because even though he's alive, I don't think that I'll ever be able to get over this. At the same time, I still love and care for him. It's like, all I want to do is rush to the hospital to be by his side, while at the same time feel like the sight of him would make me sick. He disgusts me in every way, yet the thought of being without him breaks me in ways I can't explain. What do I do? Is there any possible way for me to heal from this? Do I even consider trying to fix things with him? Do I even want to make this work? Was this entire relationship a facade that he built up to sell, a prank that is so personal and cruel and disgusting? Why would he do something that he knew would destroy me so thoroughly? What did I do to him that made him think that I deserve this? How do I start my grieving process over while also processing this breakup? How can I ever trust anyone ever again? I mean seriously. What the fuck do I do?